welcome back to HD. Wonderful HD people, welcome back. You didn't miss anything. Breitbart.com, Nurses Union, Duncan not put in isolation unit. Oh, but, you know, the guy from Texas, they were fully prepared for him, right? The guy, the gentleman in the past? No, not so quickly. CNN chief medical correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupa reported on further allegations made by a nurses union that Dallas Ebola patient Thomas Eric Duncan was not put into isolation, allowed his blood to circulate through the hospital's tube system, that is to say when they take your blood, and that waste, that is poop, piled up nearly to the ceiling, that'd be 10 feet, inside the patient's rooms on Tuesday, CNN Tonight. Gupta said that the National Nurses United started, stated excuse me, that they were informed by nurses that Mr. Duncan was not in isolation. He was not in isolation for several hours, despite the fact that a nursing supervisor asked that he go into isolation and that he may have come in contact with seven patients at that time. Just people waiting in the room. Oh, but what was it, that bonehead that uh, Michael Savage wants to be arrested, rightfully so said, that, that any hospital could handle this? According to Gupta, nurses were told, at least according, again, to this union, to wrap medical tape around their neck four or five times. They said wrap medical tape around their neck to try to prevent any of that bodily fluid from touching their exposed skin. Of course, none of that spittle is going to fly away during the jerking of moving the tape off, right, if he sneezes. Of course, <clears throat> the CDC gets respirators because their lives matter. But these nurses, I guess they're just garbage, right? They can use tape. Tape to prevent an outbreak. Also commented on the fact that waste, they didn't know what to do with the waste. And it would pile up nearly to the ceiling in some of these patients' rooms because they didn't quite know what to do with it. Gupta also reported that Wendell Watson, the director of public relations for Texas Health Resources, which owns the hospital where Duncan was treated and died, issued a statement that patient and employee safety is our greatest priority. Well, why didn't you train them? Friends, we are not ready for it, obviously. Hopefully people like me are getting us all ready for it. A CDC, you can give, but you can't get Ebola on a bus. This has to be the stupidest thing I've ever seen. If you can give Ebola on a bus, then how could you not give it to somebody? Who are you going to give it to? The people on the bus. Shazam, Sparky! There's a stupid ass Dr. Thomas Friedman, doctor of what, quackery? Director of Center for Disease Control and Prevention. What prevention? That's why there's no P at the end. CDC said during a telephone press briefing Wednesday that you cannot get Ebola by sitting next to someone on a bus, but that infected or exposed persons should not ride public transportation because they could transmit the disease to someone else. That doesn't make any freaking sense. Dr. Friedman also reported that an Ebola Dallas healthcare worker who has been diagnosed with Ebola had a temperature of 99.5. We already covered that. His statement came in response to a CN, CNSnews.com question regarding a video message that President Barack Ebola, excuse me, Obama, last week addressing Ebola-stricken countries in West Africa in which the president told residents they cannot get Ebola through casual contact like sitting next to someone on a bus. During the conference call, CNSnews.com asked Friedman in a video message to countries in West Africa that are experiencing Ebola outbreaks. President says you cannot get the disease, as I just read, but CDC recommendations state that travelers in West Africa who begin to show possible symptoms or people who ever experience a high risk of exposure should avoid public transportation, including buses. And we've also seen large amounts of concern regarding potentially infected people on airplanes. The first question is, did the CDC vet this video message? Second of all, do they stand by it? Listen to what this bonehead said. Yes, CDC vetted the message, and yes, we believe it's accurate, said the bonehead Friedman. I think there are two different parts of the equation. 
The first is, if you're a member of the traveling public and you are healthy, should you be worried that you might have got sitting next to someone? The answer is no. Why? When it's airborne. Second, if you are sick, you may have Ebola should you get on a bus. The answer is no. You might become ill. You might have a problem that exposes someone around you. Oh, so the healthy person is going to get the snot or the sneeze on their hair. Or they're going to touch the railing after somebody wiped their nose with Ebola. They're not going to get it. But it might rub off on somebody else. But it wouldn't be anybody else on the bus, would it, you freaking moron? Mark Slavo, shtfplan.com, last Ebola news for those of you who are sick of it. Patient number three suspected in Dallas, nurse's boyfriend quarantined. For those of you that don't know what proxy is, now you do. Various reports now making their way through social networks and alternative media sources claim that Nina Pham's boyfriend may have been admitted to a Dallas area hospital. It is not clear whether the individual was showing symptoms of the virus or if he had been quarantined as a precautionary measure. Nah, not a chance. According to NBC DFW, Texas Health Presbyterian that is monitoring the patient based for Center for Disease Control Protocol. I hope they do a better job with it. The boyfriend worked for an eye care firm called Alcon, A-L-C-O-N in uh, Fort Worth. Elcon CEO Jeff George sent a letter to everybody trying to downplay it, but at least he was honest enough to admit that there was some kind of a risk there. We don't even know if it's infected the dog or their neighbors yet. It says it has an incubation period of 2 to 21 days. That means that even though Pham, who has it, had only been showing symptoms for a short period of time before being admitted to the hospital, it is possible that the individual identified by Elcon, which would be her boyfriend, could have been exposed to the virus before Pham realized that she was getting sick. Which is how you catch it on a bus! With a two-day incubation period, had her boyfriend been exposed, it's possible that he could have showed a more rapid onset of symptoms than Pham or Duncan. Uh, it says the Centers for Disease Control and Texas Health Presbyterian have yet to confirm if the new patient has tested positive for the virus, but it's being uh, peppered through scattered reports that he has. Six point six million dollars is what the CDC has to contain it, and this is all the six point six billion, excuse me, and they couldn't contain it, you know, by stopping the flights. The latest potential case in Dallas highlights fears that the Ebola virus may have spread from Thomas Duncan, who was symptomatic two weeks ago, to the general population. With the high end of the incubation period being 21 days, if Duncan infected others, then the, case sh the cases should start showing up in hospitals by the end of next week. Respirators, body protective suits, goggles, gloves, and pandemic kits are not at most hospitals. Friends, that's the Ebola update, but don't go anywhere because i got three more stories that I'm going to have to get to here that you're going to want to hear. I just want to remind you, don't leave. Don't go anywhere. The Seacrest Motel is in Sandusky. You're going to be going there to go to Cedar Point. I know you are. You're going to be going there to go to Ghostly Manor as well. And when you do, you're either going to end up staying at the Breakers, which charges a fortune, like three, four, five hundred dollars $500 upwards a night, or you're going to go to the Seacrest Motel and you're going to save a bundle. You're going to tell Vicky, who takes your information for the room, that you heard about the Seacrest Motel in Sandusky from Sam at the Correct Views TCV, and you're going to get the best deal you've ever had. Friends, next story from CNS News 2, brought to you by uh, Mike McLaughlin, one of the best fiction writers extant today. Vicar of Baghdad, every single Christian wants to leave. Now, I want to mention that these Christians have been in Iraq longer than the Muslims. So don't give me this BS about who owns the land based on uh, uh, establishment. That would be the Christians. That's historical fact. Reverend Canon Andrew White, vicar of St. George's Anglican Church in Baghdad, warned Monday morning on Facebook that terrorists from the Islamic State are on the verge of entering Baghdad. The Islamic State are now less than 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles away from entering Baghdad. They said it could never happen, and now it almost has. White's organization, the Foundation for Relief and Reconciliation, 
in the Middle East said on its updated Facebook page Monday. Quote, we do not really know what is happening. All we know is that people are very afraid. We know that civilians have been killed in airstrikes, and we know that there are huge battles with ISIS, and we know that our army is not very efficient. The vicar of the only Anglican church in Iraq posted on Facebook, pause, is why you listen to the correct views. One, why is the Iraqi army so incompetent after our tax dollars, yours, mine, spent all this money to train them? Second of all, where in the seven hells are the patriots of Iraq? Do they not have firearms? Why are they running? Why are they not standing and fighting? You mean to tell me the militias in our country won't stand up and fight? Maybe they'll lose, maybe they won't. You mean to tell me the militias in this country won't stand up and raise holy hell? You're wrong. They will. Where are these people in Iraq? Why are they just running? President Obama is saying that he overstated the ability of the Iraqi army. It is so clear that they have no ability and a hard thing to say that it's true, he said. To be honest, every single Christian wants to leave. This is a travesty. This is one of the birthplaces of the great religion. White previously told the UK Telegraph on Saturday after returning to Baghdad. He was there in the US for in the UK for medical treatment. I used to say to my people, don't you leave, I'm not going to leave you, don't you leave me, he said. But now every one of them wants to leave, and the ones who are left tend to be the poorer ones who simply couldn't afford to get away earlier. White added that over 1,000 Iraqi troops have been killed by the wonderful people of ISIS, Things are so bad, he emphasized, as I said, all military airstrikes are doing is nothing. If we ever needed a prayer, it is now. They have a prayer from me, and God bless them for sure. Cannon White described the situation as sad, adding, Last week, there was no communion in Nineveh for the first time in 2,000 years. All are closed. All their people have run away. I hope they definitely communed in their own homes. White spoke of the fears that the province's Christians had about what has happened in the community up north? Some have relatives who have lost everything. Homes, furniture, and cars, they have nothing left at all. He added that while the people he had spoken to in Iraq saw the need of airstrikes, they were afraid of civilian, ca for civilian casualties. I don't blame them. There were 15.5 million Christians in Iraq, but there are now down to 300,000. White said in an address to Christians in New York City, I don't think there will be any Christians in Iraq, Wright said of the future. Even ISIS, even if ISIS is defeated, Christians probably won't go back because their neighbors didn't defend them. And one of those neighbors would be Turkey, which let this happen, who are built of some of the most vile scum that ever lived. Guys, for those of you who had tip my friend Bill, who has diabetes, I have absolutely wonderful news for you before we get to the dumdy of the day next. And let's face it, you want to know who won the dumdy of the day, so don't leave. We're getting to it next. Uh, Dave Malkovic, Prevent Disease, uh, wrote, Amino acid arginine, A-R-G-I-N-I-N-E, I guess that's arginine, arginine, found to be as effective as drugs for glucose metabolism in diabetes. If you suffer from type 2 diabetes, you may want to consider snacking on nuts to treat the condition. Supplementation with the amino acid arginine, commonly found in almonds and hazelnuts, could help improve glucose metabolism by as much as 40%, according to the new research in mice. Maybe some people with needles won't need the needles. Maybe they can now do pills and uh, arginine. The study shows that supplementation with the amino acids significantly improves glucose metabolism in both insulin-sensitive and insulin-resistant metabolisms. If you're diabetic and how do you find this out, type your city, type in natural path, and talk to whatever doctor comes up. They are doctors. More than 371 million people worldwide suffer from diabetes, 90% of whom are affected by lifestyle-related diabetes. That is bad eating. And that's type 2. The new experiments, researchers at the University of Copenhagen, working in collaboration with the University of Cincy, have demonstrated that the amino acid arginine found in salmon eggs and nuts improves glucose metabolism significantly in both lean, that's insulin sensitive, and obese, insulin resistant mice, that is fat mice. In fact, the amino acid is just as effective as several well established drugs for type 2 diabetes, says postdoc Christopher Clemenson. 
He has concluded that new experiments based on Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences, University of Copenhagen, is he, he is currently conducting research for the Institute of Diabetes and Obesity at Helmholtz Zentrum München in Germany for the environmental health of Munich. It's very good to hear. It's very, very good to hear. It says the key issue for uh, future studies is to explore the doses of arginine and can be tolerated by humans to make sure they can adjust the dosage as needed. It says supplemental dosages of 6 to 8 grams of L-arginine per day are considered safe. Please listen to this if you have diabetes or love someone that does. Hello, Glenn. Although available in food for some applications, such as stimulating secretion of growth hormone for the pituitary, it is not released quickly enough as the food is digested. The supplemental doses taken on an empty stomach will arrive at the brain barrier without competition. So you're going to want to supplement it, not just eat nuts. It says uh, the growth hormone secretion will be stimulated, which in turn could affect glucose metabolism. Very good to hear. I love giving good news. One thing I don't love doing, friends, is giving you the dumb of the day because I don't like being surrounded by this many idiots. But it's time, in fact, for just that, the dumb D of the day from BuzzFeed.com. <laughs> Governments, uh, there's two dumb -dees. I just realized that I did this. We got two dumb because I'm overrun with dumb -dees. Government set up fake Facebook page in the woman's name. The Justice Department is claiming in a little-noticed court filing that a federal agent had the right to impersonate a young woman online by creating a Facebook page in her name without her knowledge. Basically, they thought that Sandra Arquette, it looks like Arquiet with two T's, went home and by the name of Sandra Prince, and she learned later their identity had been commandeered in 2010. She hadn't been online. This cop, in order to get in contact with her friends, stole images off her phone, has her spread eagle like Tani Katane from the White Snake videos, possibly getting her raped. She did not want these pictures out. The scum cop posted them. It was set up by drug enforcement agent scum special agent Timothy Scum Sinigan, S I N N I G E N. So now cops can go through your phone, and this isn't terrorist related. Open up fake Facebook accounts for you, which is, uh, will get you knocked off of Facebook. Put you at risk by putting dangerous pictures of you online. They posted pictures of her children. Even the tabloids often get sued for this. Put their children at risk. To violate this girl's rights and the rights of her friends under the assumption that there could be drug use there. If it makes you sick, well, this will make you even sicker. Last dumb of the day, God love Mikhail Thalen, PrisonPlanet.com. He always finds me such great dumb -dies. CNN reporter returning from Liberia horrified by the lack of airport Ebola screening. The dumb -dee is going to take us where we started, friends. A CNN reporter returning from Liberia says that she was shocked by the complete lack of screening at the Atlanta airport. No, you don't understand, Obama, man. He's going to go ahead and test everybody's temperature at the airport, man, and nobody's going to get sick. Speaking with HLN's Robin Mead, CNN's senior medical correspondent Elizabeth Cohen revealed the horrifying incident in detail. I expected that they were going to take my temperature, she says. They were going to ask me lots of questions, but they didn't. Troubled by the lack of questioning, she revealed her role as a journalist covering the Ebola outbreak, assuming an enhanced screening would then take place. I said, quote, I'm a journalist. I came back from Liberia. I was covering Ebola. And the gentleman, with the intelligence of a pumpkin, who was helping me, the officer, I added the pumpkin part, Start, star, started to hand me a passport back to say, welcome home, Cohen said. Then instead he said, oh, wait a second, I got an email about passengers like you. Hold on a second. So if she was a terrorist, she could have said, okay, <laughs> and infected everybody else in line while he checked his email. He went and confirmed with someone, but he didn't know, and they conferred with someone else, and at the end he said, you need to watch yourself for signs of Ebola and said, well, what am I watching for, I asked, and he said he couldn't tell me. 
Incredibly, she went on to reveal that two of her co-workers received no screening at all, or even after admitting they had returned from Liberia. Well, now they're, you know, checking your temperature because you're not smart enough to take Tylenol and just fool them. Boneheads! Now, if it weren't bad enough, Robin, and Tylenol will work if it's early, that's what's scary. I was traveling with two colleagues, a photojournalist and a producer, and they weren't told anything, and they also said that they were journalists who had been covering Ebola. So absolutely nothing is being done. That is why Ebola is here, friends. You are listening to the correct views. I'm going to be getting to this St. Louis issue that a listener told me about. That they're finding what look like gas lines going up the lines of uh, electrical boxes. And of course, you don't put gas lines near boxes. Why would you do that? Could you possibly be thinking of gassing possible protesters? Are other cities doing it? Well, I'm going to be on this as much as I can. I don't know about it enough yet to report on it in depth, but I want to go on record for stating anybody that knows anything about it that wants to help us. We have different hours, and I haven't had him on the show yet, but it's coming. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing off, reporting for the Mediaspeaks.com. Please go there. Look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. We are always posting. And if you would like to help me make a better show, then please donate at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Good night, friends. God bless.